in the previous lecture for every vector field we defined a quantity called the divergence. So, let me write this we defined a quantity called divergence that told us about whether in an enclosed volume there was a net outflow of the vector field or net inflow of the vector field and therefore, it was related to source or sink of the field. We are now going to specialize to electric field and talk about the divergence of an electric field. Recall that electric field is a vector quantity which is a function of x, y and z. I can also write this as a function of vector r. So, its divergence is going to be the sum of the partial derivative of x component with respect to x, partial derivative of y component with respect to y and partial derivative of z component with respect to z. And again recalling how we defined it, if I take a closed volume and take over all these surfaces taking the area vector to be pointing away or pointing out of the volume. If I take the sum of E field on each surface dotted with the area and sum over the entire all the surfaces, this what this means is I am taking the component along the direction or perpendicular to the area and multiplying by the area. This was equal to the small volume let us call it delta v times the divergence and this is what told us about how the, it works as a divergence indicates what a source or a sink is. Recall that if this quantity is 0 there is no divergence and therefore, a field or this is this some some uh, some integration of the field over the area has to be non-zero in order for divergence to be non-zero and this in the case of electric field is defined as the flux. So, let us now calculate the divergence of the electric field due to a charge. Electric field E at a point x, y, z is given as integration rho r prime over r minus r prime cubed. I am deliberately writing it like this, so that you get used to it d v prime that is I am integrating over this primed volume 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. To start with let us write the electric field for a point charge, which is at x y z it will be given as 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q r minus r prime over r minus r prime cubed, where the position of the elect of the point charge is at r prime and I am calculating electric field at r, this vector being r minus r prime. And let us take its divergence, before that let me write the individual components of the electric field E x, x y z is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 x minus x prime divided by let us open this whole thing also is going to be x minus x prime square plus y minus y prime square plus z minus z prime square raised to 3 by 2. Similarly, E y at point x y z is going to be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 
or there has to be a q here, which I made a mistake, q y minus y prime over this whole thing x minus x prime square plus y minus y prime square plus z minus z prime square raised to 3 by 2. And quickly I will write the z component also E z at x y z is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q z minus z prime over x minus x prime square plus y minus y prime square plus z minus z prime square raised to 3 by 2. Let us now calculate partial of E x with respect to x. Notice that this is E x is a function of x, y, z. So, I am taking partial derivative with respect to x, which is partial derivative of 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q x minus x prime over x minus x prime square plus y minus y prime square plus z minus z prime square raised to 3 by 2. And you quickly do it, this comes out to be q over 4 pi epsilon 0 is common. First term gives you 1 over, let me again for the lack of space write this as r minus r prime cubed plus x minus x prime. Now, I am taking partial derivative of this 1 over r minus r cubed. So, this will give you times minus 3 by 2 1 over x minus x prime square plus y minus y prime square plus z minus z prime square raised to 5 by 2 and on top I will get 2 times x minus x prime. So, this comes out to be q over 4 pi epsilon 0 1 over r minus r prime cubed minus 3 x minus x prime square divided by r minus r prime raised to 5. I can similarly calculate partial E y over partial y and this will come out to be q over 4 pi epsilon 0. You can check this 1 over r minus r prime cubed minus 3 y minus y prime square over r minus r prime raised to 5 and partial E z over partial z comes out to be q over 4 pi epsilon 0 1 over r minus r prime cubed minus 3 z minus z prime square over r minus r prime raised to 5. In all this we have taken r vec vector is not equal to r prime vector because then this term will vanish and whatever mathematics I am doing will not be valid. If I add all this, so this, this, this condition you should remember. If I add all this, what am I going to get? I am going to get partial x over partial x plus partial e y over partial y plus partial e z over partial z, which is nothing but divergence of e x y z is equal to these terms together give me 3 over r minus r prime cubed. So, I get q over 4 pi epsilon 0, 3 over r minus r prime cubed minus 3 x minus x prime square plus y minus y prime square plus z minus z prime square gives me modulus r minus r prime square divided by r minus r prime raised to 5 and this is 0. So, as long as you are not sitting on the charge, the divergence of the field is 0. So, what we have learned is, if I take a point charge q at position r prime and calculate divergence of E at some point r, this is 0 for r not equal to r prime. So, 
Now, if I take a charge distribution, as long as I am away from the charge distribution, that means at a point, at a point where there is no charge, divergence of electrostatic field will always be 0. What it means is that integration E over a volume where there is no charge is 0 over a volume that encloses no charge. But what about a volume that encloses a charge. Let us now look at that. Suppose, I have a charge q at r prime and I make a volume, spherical volume, because that is easiest to handle around it. So, let us look at this charge and the volume around it then I know field lines are going to go out like this everywhere. And area as we already discussed also points away from the volume perpendicular to the surface. I will talk about this perpendicularity and all that a little more later, but right now just just take that ds, we are going to take the area is going to be taken at every point pointing away from the surface, pointing out of the volume on the surface perpendicular to the surface. So, you see E and the surface are parallel everywhere and therefore, E dot ds is nothing but E times the area there. Now, I know for a point charge E is q over 4 pi epsilon 0 1 over r square, where r is the distance from the center. So, it is value of E all over the surface, all over the spherical surface is the same and therefore, if I take E dot d s is going to be 4 pi r square q over 4 pi epsilon 0 1 over r square. This cancels 4 pi cancels and this comes out to be q over epsilon 0. So, now I know for a point charge E dot d s around it over a sphere is equal to q over epsilon 0. Is it true for any surface? Let us see that. If I make an arbitrary surface, then E dot d s over the volume between two surfaces is going to be 0. Why? As we have already seen, that E dot d s integral is divergence of E d v and there is no charge in this region in between. If there is no charge in between, then this is going to be 0. If this is 0, that means whatever flux is coming in whatever electric field lines of flux is coming in, same flux is going out, because there is divergence in between is 0. And this, this implies, this implies that E dot d s over any surface is q enclosed by that surface divided by epsilon 0, that surface need not be spherical. Thank you.